Hello and welcome to the morning meeting. My name is Jimmy. His name is Maddie. We're talking about John Boy Media behind the scenes. We had the Dan Patrick iHeart podcast announcement. We got a Snapchat now. Boone solo because Jake missing and uh, slap balls underway. And we're filming another the next Captain's League this week. So a lot going on. It's brought to you by Factor. And thank you very much for joining. As always, we ask qu- answer questions from the chat so uh, or from the comments. So if you want to leave a comment and have a question, do so. We will answer it later on. How are you, Matthew? I am good. Shocked that Jalen Brunson is not on Team USA. That is incredibly odd. Um, but to make up for it, let's get to the next 100 subscriber milestone. How about that? Because last time we asked, it worked. Let's get to 17.6K. We're on 17.5K. We can't be acting like 17.6 is a milestone. Everything's a milestone. 20 would be the next milestone. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Um, We're recording on a Tuesday at 1.09 p.m. Because we have a busy week. and well, We have Warehouse Thursday and Warehouse Friday. What do you want to start with? The Dan Patrick and iHeart Podcast Partnership? Yeah, I think we should. The announcement went out yesterday, Monday. Um, can you just first explain to people kind of the interworkings or the the background information of why we decided to partner with Dan Patrick Show and iHeart? Yeah, well, so it's kind of it's kind of confusing because it's more of a behind the scenes thing than. Yeah. Um, I saw some responses. Actually, I didn't see that many responses, but I heard from someone that some people were confused in the responses. I actually didn't have time to go check them out after the announcement. Basically, um, the Dan Patrick Show, they have a bunch of podcasts on their network. They have budget to go add shows, right, uh, to bring on to their network that they get. They have exclusive rights to sell. They help promote. They're part of, like, the family in a way. And they, from how I know it, uh, they had a budget to acquire, and they put out, like, you know, through agents and whatever, put out um, submissions or like had a bunch of different networks or podcasts submit to be part of the their network to get that. We submitted a talk, uh, Jimmy's Three Things, which is a, um, it's like a show within the talk and baseball universe that I do on that YouTube channel and um, Wake and Jake. And we, They chose, they went with us. Now, like they went with those two shows as well as just John Boy Media in a whole and building and like, you know, really liked, it's like they saw those two shows and were like, we want those two. It's like, we want to be part of what John Boy Media is doing, like the social media, the reach and all of that. So it's fun. It was the longest like process, all these processes, because we have a couple others that are, you know, in the middle that might happen, might not are so long. So this has been going on for a long time. Will we get it? Will we not get it? What's going to be the deal? When does it start? We Originally, we're hoping to start before the season. Um, but uh, it went uh, out now. So for the consumer, nothing really changes. You know, the business side of this is that um, iHeart Podcasts and Dan Patrick have the, the exclusive rights to sell on the shows. And Jimmy's Three Things is going to go on to an exclusive RSS feed instead of being on the Talking Baseball RSS feed because, so I should have said that on my thing today, because, because um, they don't have Talking Baseball, so you can't just like sell across the RSS feed as a whole, so it needs to be its own thing. Wake and Jake already is a separate RSS feed. Uh, Wake and Jake will have guests on it. I think there's going to be cross appearances to promote everything. Um, we haven't organized that that much yet. But really, you know, it's like the business side is an upfront from them to us. And then now they get to sell on the shows. Yeah. And then there should be just like kind of cohesiveness and collaboration. And like we said, like appearing on each other's shows, um, talking with each other, that stuff. So that's kind of the, the whole deal. Did I miss anything that people were asking? Asking? No, not really. I, we we won't be selling on it anymore. That's what you mean by exclusive. They are solely the people selling on it, and that's where you said they paid us up front. That's how that yeah. partnership is structured. And Jimmy's three things is on a heater. I don't know if today's is going to do well or not, 
but Angel, probably. Yeah, I felt a little dirty doing that. Um, it's a one out of ten already. So it is. I just checked it. It's very early. But the Nolan uh, Shanuel episode I did, I didn't know if that was going to be that popular because it wasn't a fresh story and it wasn't even like the biggest story. But I just wanted to dig into it. And that's got 83K. Yeah, that's... Props to Dan Patrick and iHeart Podcast because they're hopping on Jimmy's that, Three Things at the right time. Well, that Nolan Shanuel deep dive, so last week's uh, Jimmy's Three Things is now the third most viewed episode on YouTube for a Talking Baseball channel. Yeah. And this is why I started Jimmy's Three Things. One, it's kind of like how I like talking and doing is presenting just like quick hitters. Uh, I totally stole it from uh, the great cricketer, cricket podcast listen to. Like they do IPL reviews and they just say three things. <laughs> Literally. Like thing one, thing two. And that's what I'm doing. So thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Um, not that maybe they created having show that's called three things uh but i'm gonna give them full credit for it and then i knew if i kept them shorter it would get more promotion which would help draw more people to the youtube channel so i don't know if you've seen the analytics on the nolan shanuel deep dive meaning new people versus returning yep but it is awesome Forty-two thousand return viewers Twenty-four thousand new viewers nice. came to the channel from that episode oh, and yeah. uh 500 new subscribers so that's awesome because the one before that the Mets deep dive i thought was much better i did cross post it on the main channel so it racked up views there but it didn't do as well as this one anyway so then the newest one came out um i didn't have a full topic i actually i went through a ton of deep dives with angel i wanted to find all of his pitches and make a game plan Mm. as a team right like okay we need righties who throw breaking balls away we need and then and then we also need uh two seamers low to lefties where you know i I wanted to like pinpoint where he is and isn't but i there wasn't enough correlation to his misses he's really just an old school umpire if it's a 2-0 count then the tight zone the strike zone gets bigger if it's an 0-2 count the strike zone gets um smaller like he's just that if the catcher does not frame the ball or it doesn't it, it you miss your spot and the catcher has to reach it's a ball no matter where it is if the catcher shifts in front of him it's a ball. so it's just very old school umpiring where he's like calling it on all the peripherals. If the right. batter like really re- leans over for an away pitch, then he's going to call that because he thinks it was close because the batter reacted. It was, it was more stuff like that. Right. Which might have been interesting, but I pivoted. Um, all of our YouTube channels have subscriber goals for 2024. And news as of this week, Talking Baseball became the closest percent to filling their 2024 goal. Nice. The new front runner passing We Got Ice by 1%. That's awesome. Yeah. And all of this to say the if every channel reaches their subscriber goal, then as a company we will reach um, our growth goals. Obviously, some channels will make up for the other ones that, and everything will balance out, hopefully. The, um, the Mets video got a shitload of subscribers. How many? 1,000. Awesome. It got 10,000, I mean. No, no, 1,000. 10,000 in the last 90 days. 1,396 subscribers on the Mets video. Damn. Yeah, I thought the Otani one did a lot, but it did it did 800. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. That was very cool. Cool. Oh, John Boy Mini's at 1.9 now? Yeah. Uh, it depends where you look. 1.85. Oh, it's rounding. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, let's, uh, before we jump into a few warehouse questions, the whole warehouse section of the show is uh, brought to you by the Farmer's Dog. Oh, we got Farmer's Dog recently. We share it with our neighbors. Okay. We have two dogs, so we get a lot, and our neighbor's dogs like it. So we kind of like deliver it around. Everyone loves it. Um, if you have dogs and you want to feed them well, you can get them Farmer's Dog. It's not just 
Uh, Farmer's Dog isn't just fresh, higher quality food. They also send the food pre-portioned. That is nice. So you just like cut the hole in the bag and slide it out Mm. into the thing. Uh, Pre-portioned specifically for your dog based on their unique nutritional needs. Smart, healthy pet food that you can feel good about feeding your pup. It's the best option for dogs for all stages. So if you got a dog that was just born, it's the best option. If you got a dog that's about to die, it's the best option. Uh, A fresh diet has been found to have all sorts of benefits. Healthier coat and skin. My dogs are gross right now. I actually need to book the the groomer called and they were like, you don't have an opening until next Monday. And I was like, uh, I'll ask my wife and see what she says. And then I got a phone. Kate was like, yeah. And I was like, damn it. She just booked it. Right. They stink. They're smelly and they stink, but they eat healthy farmer's dog. And you can too. Farmer's dog.com slash morning meeting, uh, for 50% off your first box. Farmers dog, the farmers dog.com slash morning meeting, get 50% off and you get free shipping. Yeah. And free shipping. All right. Let's, let's talk a little warehouse. Uh, the first thing that I wanted to talk about, which is the exciting murmur of the office is that slap ball is really performing well. Yeah. I mean, other than Blitzball battle three, which we've talked in length about before on this channel, it's the top performer. It's outperforming BB four floorball, et cetera. It is cool. The 12 hour numbers are awesome. The one day numbers are really good. You get into the three day numbers and they're the first and second episode did really well. And then the, I don't think the rest will stay to that pace. My, my, which is still good. But my theory is those first two episodes had so many comments because people Mm. were commenting about rules and stuff that it got an extra day in the, the impression algorithm yep. bump, mm-hmm. and then it didn't. So in my head, we kind of need to, and and Blitzball Battle 3 and other sports we've done, like comment, comment this for the, home run. for the home run, and that might have actually helped more than we think. Blitzball Battle 3, did we do those? Yeah. We did? Yeah. And we didn't Blitzball Battle 4? Right. And I kind of think we do need to, give people that are naturally shy or not common a lane. Like even for me, like I'm, I don't always have something to say. Oh yeah. But I if don't you give me a prompt, I'll play along and have fun. Yeah. So I think we have to put that back in our brains for these games. Like, and you get a Jersey, like we can give away jerseys. We can give away anything, but just if that helps as much as I think it does, I yeah. think it did help. Um, then we have to put that back into. Now, also, the the shorts are what really helped Blitzball Battle 3. Like, we had two shorts go absolutely wild. Um, but the base numbers are really cool because what I care about most are 12 day, 12-hour 12 views and one-day views. Are we on your calendar? Do you, do you, do you know the day and you're going to watch us when it comes out? And that number is at an awesome place, especially for slap ball, a game that, we invented and people don't know what it is in Captain's League, so it's not franchise, but the two day views are uh, 51,000. So 51,000 views on average uh, for slot ball uh, after two days. Yep. That's really good. So Blitzball Battle 4 was also 51,000. So in my mind, okay, that's a little bit of our base right now. We like maintained our base from Blitzball Battle 4 to slot ball. After that, you need help. YouTube needs to keep promoting it. People need to find it that's not on their schedule, but YouTube is finding you. And we need to do a better job like placating to that. And if the comments will help, maybe they do. I don't know. It, should, it definitely doesn't hurt. No. Um, but to see those first three metrics that I track, 12 hours, one day, two day, go up is really satisfying and good because I do think that isn't algorithm based. It's have have you become part of our community yeah. based and um like ball and play slot ball was 35,000 this is 51,000 and it, when it was 35 that wasn't bad for um ball and play because floor ball 2 before that was 39 and ball and play 1 before that was 37 yep. so that what we were like all right 35 to 40 that's our 
two-day um, average. That's our community. And to have slot ball be in 51, that's a big jump. So when the next tournament comes out, which is ball and play two, yeah. I hope we maintain that or even it bumps up to like 55 on two day views. Uh, and then I think it's up to the algorithm and um, shorts kicking off and promotion and outside marketing and shit to get more in like the one week or two week views. So, but it is really nice to see. I mean, the 12 hour views have been crazy. Awesome. Really, really fun. I agree. Like 32,000 views in the first 12 hours for all four or five games so far. Yeah. And the sport itself gets better. Like mm -hmm. game six is a very good game. So for out of all the regular season games, game six is a very good game. Yeah. It's like there's so many goals where I'm like, whoa, that was a nice play. All right, and we have our draft in two days for Blitzball, so we'll kind yeah. of back in Captain's League mindset. I had that down below, but we can jump to it. Um, Captain's League Blitzball is coming up, like you said, the draft in a few days. You did a mock draft. Do you have, like, a lean that you feel like you want to share? It's very far away for the public. I, have a, I traded pieces uh, away to have better picks in other Draft Blitzball was the one I was like, I'll have the worst slots. So I don't have a pick until the sixth pick. So Jake and Jolly both have two picks before I have my first. Yep. And Jack has one. Uh, so I have a philosophy that I want to draft towards out of what's remaining. And then we'll have to see. So I got to find people that I think will buy in and have the skill sets I want but I'm not going to share no, because this comes out before the draft. Um, we did a training session last week. Did you, did you do like warm ups in practice? Are you feeling good personally? Um, well, I pitched well, but there's a lot of people that haven't hit a blitz ball before. So you can kind of just throw a curve and they get confused. Like those curve balls I was throwing don't work in a, in a franchise series. No, not franchise. But they're they feel great. They're twir I was twirling them. Yeah, yeah. I threw some knuckleballs. I got some ground outs on knuckleballs. It should be fun. It should be different. We'll we'll see. We're a little worried about how many having too many walks, too many like if the skill level drops. But it some sports the skill level can drop, but it it leads to better play. Yeah, I'm worried about blitzball there. I share the same worry. Yeah. Um, speaking of Blitzball, Lou and Colin go down to the Blitzball World Series. That just came out, episode one. They won. They won. They didn't. Lou called a walk off. Yeah. And he walked. Yeah, he walked. It would have I thought he was going to walk it off. I, they started the playing like music and yeah. shit. Me too. Um, no, that was cool that's to see. Cool. Yeah, it was cool to see. Uh, any plans to have people get more involved in that kind of thing? That's all timing and we're pretty busy. Yeah. That's, uh, Aaron, the creator of Blitzball, uh, kind of asked a few of the players that play in the warehouse and, and Colin and Lou were the most available. I believe that it was supposed to be a full team and then a few people got sick as well. Yeah, I forget. But I don't know. I have started planning next year's 2025 schedule on my, mentally. I saw a calendar invite. Oh, yeah. Um, the last warehouse-specific question, I believe, did. Uh, Joe Lely asked, are there any legs to warehouse fantasy leagues? I don't know. We really want to make like pools. And, uh, uh, and I think we're talking to DraftKings about having like um, fantasy pools or fantasy something there, like within the app would be really cool. Yeah. Um, we need to get more people to use the codes. And I was like, well, I think if there's pools, like if we do the regular season of an event and then there's a pool for the playoffs, we could we could get people to go in there and have fun because it's you know just pool free to play pool but you got to open the app so um besides that i have no idea yeah it's a loose idea at this point yeah. that we are we're talking to draftkings about 
Um, but I think that we also thought a long time ago in voice on this show about just hosting one on the website. That's probably a little far off at this point, but is yes, yeah, still in the back of the mind as a possibility. Yeah. It'd be cool to do those pools. Yeah. Um, Let's, before we get into the back portion of the show, let's go to the Factor Insight of the Week, which is, of course, brought to you by Factor. Factor Insight of the Week, brought to you by Factor, which also brings you stress-free eating, decision-free eating. Well, you can make decisions because they have a ton of flavors. They have 60 add-ons. They have breakfast. They have lunch. They have snacks. They have beverages. So you can make decisions if you want. One of my perks of Factor is that I don't have to make decisions. I just get to open it up, eat it, enjoy it, be fulfilled, and don't feel gross any, uh, the rest of the day. So I enjoy the no decisions. But if you want them, you can make decisions because they have a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular Options like calorie, smart, keto, protein plus, or vegan or veggie. Personally, I don't care about any of those words, but if you do, they offer that. They have gourmet meals. They got premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, truffle butter, broccolini, asparagus, no fuss, no mess meals. So head to factormeals.com slash morejohnboy50 and use code morejohnboy50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code more John Boy 50 at factormeals.com slash more John Boy 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. Thank you very much, Factor, for being our first sponsor of the show. And I was going to say our favorite, but what if Farmer's Dog's listening? No, not our sides. favorite. It's your dog's favorite. Yes, it's true. All right, Joey McFly says, hey, Jimmy, question on John Boy's merch. How do you guys have so many designs and how fast do you guys come up with them? Do you guys just own a bunch of plain shirts and hire another company to print them? I'm very impressed with how much product you have. Well, um, we use like drop shipping. So they come up with the designs and then we have a, you know, a third party fulfillment center, put them on the website, you buy it, they fulfill it and send it to you. Um, so it's not like we have just like, uh, we don't have inventory really. We have some, but not a lot of inventory. Uh, it's mostly on demand, but, um, as far as the designs go, they crush it. The team is doing really well. We're, we're getting back into the groove of making like quick hitters. Um, something exciting happens. Uh, let's make a shirt about it. Be first to market. Um, you know, Sarah on the team has been crushing that. Um, like she just on my mind, cause she did one, um, Sunday night, the Padres and the, Dodgers and the Mr. Irrelevant. I think it was actually BBD messaged the Slack, which is called like design idea dump and just said, Mr. Irrelevant Padres. And then 44 minutes later, Sarah had the design made up on the store for purchase. And we have sold a ton of those. Mm. Yeah. It's doing like really well. And, um, Padres player reached out, asked for a whole box of them for the clubhouse. So that's kind of how it works. There's insight into like how that one went down. You know, when they did the dogs like this, Verdugo did it, Jake put it in there and we got those out and Yankee player asked for those too. So, uh, yeah. And then they have all their lines that they come up with. I think they're working on one right now for all the podcasts, but the JM Essentials line, the city vintage, women belong in sports lines. But I'm not, I'm not fully in, I'm not in those meetings really at all or the no. So like, I never know when those are coming out. That's the whole, you know, team, but it has been fun to see the merch really taken off. Like the, the plain gut shirts did really well. They were a bestseller for a little bit The we got ice are doing like their in jokes. My arm hurts or camp fork. Those have been doing really well. And then the topical shirts for baseball, the, the dogs shirt. Um, um, we had another one that did really well, the Mr. Irrelevant, but then another one recently did well. I think a, a different dog shirt. They all did well. Yeah, they all did well. But there was an, another team I thought did someone did well. I don't know. We have a bunch of Orioles shirts coming out. But uh, yeah, I guess I didn't see because I don't really go on Twitter and, and read responses anymore. But oh, 
apparently the response to the Mr. Irrelevant, like if you were to just read the people that reply to it, was all like negative. Oh, really? Yeah. I And then, um, but I was trying to explain that the people that buy it don't reply. They just click the link. Yeah. <laughs> and um, you only get negative responses to merch for yeah. all time. Any company. No one's going to buy this dog. <laughs> Who's buying this? That's like every merch or spam. It's just people angry. Yep. But then like people buy them. Twitter is the fakest thing. I'm in a cycle right now. <laughs> I'm in a cycle right now that is hilarious. Why? Because any everything I tweet gets quote tweeted oh. and is like, I'm the worst person in the world. Oh, okay. I'm on a heater. I don't know which one's going to happen. Um, and then like, it's just a group. It's just like the people that hate us, you know? Back in the day, there was a DM group chat of kids that would uh they would share a tweet and then go everyone quote tweet this at 404 so we blow it up and they would all quote tweet it and be like look at this he's racist look at this he's an idiot look at this and how do i know this well they put me in the chat to torture me so i saw what was happening this was a while ago and i would leave the chat and then they would pull me back in and then uh, it was just like, that was a hell cycle. Um, that was back when I still cared more about that. I've learned, we've gotten so big that that group has gotten bigger. But yesterday, I Ryan was like, Sterling, they said Sterling might retire. What are your thoughts? And I was like, oh, I guess he didn't want to go to Canada. So he just retired. It's just like the top of my head, quick yeah. little joke. That's not even like a funny, like it's harmless. Yeah, It's just like, ugh. Um, I didn't read a lot of it, but I saw that it was getting a lot of uh, hate. It is funny, timing-wise. Every, yeah, it's kind of bizarre. And that one was really making me laugh last night. I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> that's crazy. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. It's a weird place, so I'm trying to let the rest of our company me and Jake were thinking about it. Like, you know, we have so many people now that thousand people could leave a review and that's not even 0.1% of our followers Yeah, across platforms and shit. True. Um, Was the shirt that you were thinking of Jackson Holiday? Maybe. Orioles. There's this take me out to the ball game shirt that I hadn't seen promoted anywhere. I'm sure it has been. I just didn't see it, but I like it. Where on the website? Yeah, go to New and Fresh, and it's uh, six most recent. Has all the stadiums on there. That's nice. Oh, that is cool. I didn't see that one either. All right. Uh, next up, I wanted to talk about Snapchat because you, Jake, and the company all created Snap accounts. Courtney was making me laugh when she kept saying Snap on, yeah. in the meeting. Because I think that's what they go by, but I've never like heard somebody call it not anything but Snapchat. Um, but we created Snap profiles for you all. Um, do you? Can you see the number of followers you have? Is it on your phone? I don't even know how to really understand it yet. I haven't yeah. been on this in a while. Every time I open it, it's a selfie. I hate that. I don't know if you can change it. I googled, can I change this? I couldn't figure it out. Um. No, I don't know how to see how many followers I have. My friends, my public profile. Yeah, do that. 76. Nice. But we haven't done anything yet. Yeah. The company account's awesome. Yeah. It's so Snapchat has, a, and now I'm going to speak a little out of turn here because I don't fully know. I just know there's a lot of business opportunity happening um, with Snapchat. And we've had talks in a while, but basically... They're kind of like, if you're not using us already, then fuck off, which is totally fair. That's the gist of what I get. Okay. But if you are, you do have these uh, personality accounts or like media accounts, then there are big opportunities for you and new audience. So we just had to like bite the bullet and start it eventually. And we did. Did you see how Kev ran the Snapchat yesterday? Yeah, it was funny. I just went up to Kyle and Taylor and I was like, Hey, this is what our Insta story should be. 
Mm. Like this is, I know we don't want to cloud the Instagram feed, the reels and the posts with too much, just like behind the scenes. But that was such cool insight into us that we don't offer anywhere. Yeah. And no one's going to like care or grow. or going to have that like vibe of like, look what we're doing or change the perspective. It's not just one dude making videos. We have a lot going on until we showcase it. And I don't know if Kyle's continued to do it today, but yeah, I thought it was, I was, I was enjoying it a lot. How do I, I just don't want to navigate the damn thing. All right, John Moore Media. If I go to the story and you can like go back to the beginning, I guess, I don't know how far it would last, 24 hours. I think they last longer now, but I'm looking through it. It's, I like it. We did every fan base, uh, Five words or less, your feelings. This is John Boy Media's Snapchat profile. So just search John Boy on Snapchat. So yesterday, me and Jolly were mock drafting the Captain's League. Yep. And Kev just came up and filmed it, like behind the scenes. And we were had the spreadsheet open and filmed the mock draft of the Captain's League. Uh, and then the whiteboard, the blackboard, chalkboard we have, which always has a question on it. Oh, yeah. Then they just went around like Joe's was gaming in the gaming room. So they got some shots of that. Then we got ice has a new song dropping soon. So they got behind the scenes of them, like checking that out. Then Kyle today did Padres fan in five words, Mets fan in five words, D backs fan in five words, Yankees fan in five words, because we have all those different fans here. Then a behind the scenes of me editing my Jimmy's three things, which I didn't even know he took this mm-hmm. over my shoulder. Like, I had no idea he was doing that, but that's cool. Orioles fan in five words or less. And then a behind the scenes of what Sarah was working on. She's working on a, I'm guessing that's a milkman shirt for Cowser. Yep. Um, she's drawing it. And then Mike was working on a Cubs show to graphic. And then me and BBD preparing for the Boone episode. And then behind the scenes of the Boone episode. Man, I just was like, this is cool. We have so much going on. Day two of trying to get the window washers to notice us. <laughs> and then we're making upgrades to the internet. So Mike's doing it. So like, yeah, for the people that like this, show which is behind the scenes i thought that was that's cool i know not everyone is going to want that and you're going to want content right like you're going to want breakdowns or full shows or the full videos but you know we we've always struggled to have people understand that we're bigger than you think that we have more going on than you think uh you know whenever people see the office like what all those people do all day well it's like well we should show them yeah so I saw that and I was like, guys, this should be the Instagram inst- story every day. Yeah, sure. It's way more like engaging and kind of like humanizes us and shows all our departments. So I enjoyed it. So yeah, we have Snapchat now. I pulled up Snapchat, saw my Snapchat memories five years ago today. The Yankees went up 4 nothing against the Red Sox on a Talkman triple off of Chris Sale. Is that when they lost? I don't know. They didn't save that one to the Snapchat memories if they did. Yeah. I don't, it's still very confusing for me to navigate it. I can't figure it out. There's a map, places, all this stuff. Got a lot of friend requests. I don't want to be your friend. Please don't request. <laughs> When's the last time you sent a Snapchat to somebody? I sold my Snapchat in like 2017. You sold it? Yeah. Why? My Snapchat name was Taste. T-A-S-T-E. Oh. And I would uh, take a Snapchat every day of me taking my straw and throwing it in the garbage before work. And that was kind of all the only thing it did. Um, and someone was like, I'll trade you this Instagram with 100K followers for your Snapchat account. Okay. What did, what came of the Instagram? I think it's the laughs from the past Instagram. That has 100K followers. Maybe 20K. 20K? 20K. But they're not, no one, they're like, no one, they don't get any likes or views because those people, it's like fake followers. Yeah. But he got my account. (laughs) Just because he wanted the username Taste. He wanted the username Taste. Uh, I scooped that up. I knew it would be popular. And then I think he was like horny, Snapchatting like my friends, and they thought it was me. (laughs) So that kind of blew up in my face. Horny Snapchatting. Yeah. Okay. Like butt pics and stuff. Right. Butt pics. Yeah. 
Oh, man. Okay. But that was me. That's funny. <laughs> Do you think if we went and searched taste, it would come up same guy now? Maybe. Maybe he resold it. Why don't you briefly talk about Jared Jones visiting the office yesterday? I'm going to look up taste. Jared Jones, Mitch Keller's teammate, because Mitch Keller didn't come, came to the office. With Amber Jeez. Sabathia. And he, we did a fun game where you had to name a pirate or a pirate, a player or a pirate. He was good. He did a lot of other stuff too but that I wasn't there for. But it's fun. It's cool to have players come through the office. He's made three starts. Did he start yesterday? No, he starts today. Today. Go get him. Go get him. Throw a perfect game. How tall is he on the height chart? He clocked in at six foot and he was happy about it. Okay, because Base Barber says six one. He's not six one. It's crazy how they just lie. It's that's the most blatant one I've ever seen. He's five ten. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Was, I mean, good for him. But yeah, I don't know why sure. they why I don't know why athletes' heights are just lies. I don't know. Like across the board. It's a really weird thing that everyone just accepts. Yeah. Uh no, he was awesome. Did you hear my idea about making a, a JM Whispers yeah. Twitter account? Yeah. And whenever a player stiffs us, not that Mitch Keller stiffs us, because we don't even know how how in he was. I think yeah, it was like it was Jake Eddie, DMing him. And like Mitch might come. So we thought he was coming and he didn't come. That's JM okay. Whispers. And then I'll tweet out like, should I even say my example? I guess not. No. Yeah. Twitter's not a fun place. Can't get joke clipped. Um, the taste Snapchat. Yep. is the guy's name is Justin that has that. Do you remember if that was his name? No. Probably I mean, don't know his name. No, I wasn't. What's he got going on? Private. Can't see it. What a loser. Courtney Hirsch joined Snapchat five minutes ago from my contacts. Nice. Um. All right. Two last things on talking Yanks. You referred to one earlier. Uh, you did a solo boon app. Jake's out. Yeah. Is he okay? I don't know. He got caught up somewhere. Okay. How was the solo? It was good. I'm, I don't know. I mean, I didn't even have that many questions prepped, but it's easier just to kind of flow into a conversation. Um, sometimes Jake will be doing his questioning and I'll be like trying to navigate our sheet, what hasn't been asked, what hasn't been asked, so I can't actively listen. So it's kind of like Jake's having combo and then I do it. And that's not great. I understand that, but it just kind of happens where I'll search something up. But with this, I couldn't really do that. So it was just more conversation, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like I had to ask questions and free flow. We got into some, some interesting like asides that I enjoyed. But I don't know. See how people are liking it. Is it up? It's up. It's up. It is a 2 out of 10. That's good. You said it's sad. Yeah, I want 1 out of 10s. John Sterling retirement reaction is a 1 out of 10. I wonder if people on YouTube were as mad as people on Twitter about it. Jake is probably hanging out with his new best friend, Dan Patrick. True. Probably, yeah. I think that's the only... I hope Jake had an appointment to eat his ranch so this team can get it together. Those are the two comments with Jake. Boone said he quoted outs above average talking about the infield defense. I said, oh, you guys are outs above average guys now? Because they were. <clears throat> well, when IKF was on the team. Right. They avoided outs above average like it was a lie. Right. And how did he respond? Yeah, it's one of I like. Well, I like uh, tells one part of the story, something like that. That's funny. Yeah. Um, the other thing, talking Yanks related, is, is that we rolled out memberships um, on that channel. It's not yes. like a ton of influx there, but how's that been doing? People aren't doing it or no? I think we have like fifteen members. Nice. We should do it on warehouse. Okay. Yeah, we can do warehouse with all the premieres, um, and then. See, it's easiest to do it on live channels, channels yeah. that go live. Premieres doesn't matter? Premieres would still work. Yeah. So that's why I thought that. Yes. Agree. Warehouse is a good example. Talking baseball doesn't really go live anymore, so that one might be a little bit tougher. We got to change all the skins for Talking Baseball to match the new Talking Yanks. Yeah. Have to do that. Now I see it. I'm like, ugh. 
you ugly. U-G-L-Y, you ain't got no alibi, you ugly. Hey, hey, you ugly. Um, the very last thing of this episode before we get out of here is a question from the last comments. So if you've made it to this point in the episode, leave a like. You're probably already subscribed, but subscribe if you aren't. And drop a question for next week, similar to the question that B. Smarty uh, asked. Jimmy, I'm going on a last-minute trip to Australia in a couple of weeks, parentheses, east side. Any suggestions on what to do and see that might not be obvious? I haven't been in 20 years. No, strike that, reverse it. 2024 minus 1999, 25 years. I haven't been in 25 years, so I don't know. Go to the beaches. Go to Lindfield, New South Wales, Bradfield Road. See my old house. Could do that. Yeah, you could do that. Uh, things that my family did back then when people would visit us. Um, we would we did the uh, Gen- Genevan Caves, Genevan Caves, Australia, Genolan. We did the Genolan Caves. We did the Three Sisters, the Blue Mountains, Three Sisters, Three Sisters Walk. I think one of them fell down at one point. Uh, we did the Three Sisters a good amount. Obviously, we went to the Opera House and the Harbor Bridge uh, and uh, that stuff. Uh, sporting events, I would go to an AFL game or a Big Bash game if those are going on while you're there. I think, though, like uh, uh, some people... Um, like if you wanted to renting an RV and driving on the Gold Coast is very popular, I believe. Or not the Gold Coast, the uh Yeah, the Gold Coast. Or no. Where's the beautiful strip of road that we would drive on by Melbourne, is it? I don't know. I really don't know. A lot of stuff. Hang on some parks. Say hi to people. There's a beach I liked by Bondi Beach called Sandy Beach, but it was small. It was really sandy. <laughs> Try not to go to the big beaches. They're too crowded. There's little nice beaches off the big beaches. Uh, we would go to that blowhole. Remember I showed you guys that on GeoGuessr? I watched that that episode, or the second half of it. It was funny. Yeah. So, I don't know. People from Australia, you guys got it. I haven't been there in a long time. We would go to Koala Park, and then there's an alligator place we would go to as well. Okay. We went camping at Marimarang. I shit my pants. <laughs> uh, one of those times. Okay. Didn't make it to the toilet in time. Hey. Happens. Had to be nine or ten. Solid. Fourteen. Log. I did at fourteen too. But that was a different story. That was much worse. Come back next week for that story. And see you guys later. Subscribe. Oh, yanks. All the non-Yanks fans out there. Pissed. <laughs>